In this video, we're going to look at the divisibility tests for a very large number. Here's your very large number. 7,826,712. We're going to do the divisibility tests for the numbers 2 through 12. I'm going to tell you this right now. I'm going to be saying the number 7,826,712 a lot in this video. If you want, and I don't condone drinking, Instead of doing a drinking game every time I say that number, why don't you just write me a check for $50? We'll call it even. That sounds good. Let's start off with 2. 2 is a very easy number to check. Basically, if your last digit ends with a 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8, in other words, if your last digit is even, that means the entire number is divisible by 2. Our number ends with a 2. Hooray! which means 7,826,712 is divisible by 2. Nice one. You just have to look at it. 3. As it turns out, 3 and 9 pretty much have the same test. If the sum of the digits add up to a number that is divisible by 3, then the original number is divisible by 3. For 9, if the sum of the digits add up to a number that is divisible by 9, then the entire number is divisible by 9. So let's check that now. So as for side work, we're going to do 7 plus 8 plus 2 plus 6 plus 7 plus 1 plus 2. And we're going to add it up. We don't need a calculator. Notice this adds up to 10. These three numbers add up to 10. And 7 plus 6 make 13. So 10 plus 10 plus 13 is, in most countries, 33. Notice that 3 divides into 33, which means 3 divides into our original number, say it with me, 7,826,712. But notice that 9 does not divide into 33, which means 9 does not divide into our original number. I just saved you 50 bucks, you're welcome. So that's the rule for 3 and 9. The rule for 4 is actually related to the rule for 2. With the rule for 2, you check just the last digit. With the rule for 4, you actually check the last two digits. So if 4 divides into the last two digits, then 4 divides into the original number. So notice 4 does divide into 12. So that means 4 will divide into 7,826,712. The reason that this works is because 100 is a multiple of 4, which means any multiple of 100 is automatically a multiple of 4. Notice 7,826,700 is a multiple of 100, so we don't have to check those numbers. We just have to check the last two. In other words, the numbers that are less than 100. We're going to see that same type of pattern when we do the rule for 8. The rule for 5 is just as easy as the rule for 2. If the original number ends with a 0 or a 5, that means that 5 will divide into the entire number. Our number does not end with a 0 or a 5, which means 5 will not divide into 7,826,712. It's fun to say. It's even more fun to write. The rule for 6 actually calls upon two previous rules, 2 and 3. If 2 and 3 both work, so does 6. We will see a rule similar to 6 later on. Since 2 and 3 both work for our number, so does 6. So just check 2 and 3. 7. The rule for 7 is a little crazy complex. Basically what you do is you take the last digit out of the number, double it, subtract it from the remaining digits. You repeat this process until you get to a multiple of 7. If you do not get to a multiple of 7, then that means the original number is not a multiple of 7. Let's do that now. So ignoring the last number, we'll be left with 782671. Taking that last number, 2, doubling it, we get 4. And we're going to subtract it. Subtracting it, we get 78. 2, 6, 6, 7. And re we repeat this process. So ignoring the last number, taking the last digit, 7, 
doubling it, we get 14. Subtracting, we get 7, 8, 2, 5, 2. Keep going. Taking that last digit out, doubling it, subtracting, we get 7, 8, 2, 1. Take that last digit out, double it, subtract, we get 7, 8, 0. Not looking good. Taking that last digit, doubling it, still 0, we get 78. Well, we can't go any further because we're going to start getting negative numbers, but the whole idea is notice that 77 is a multiple of 7, but not 78, which means our original number, 7,826,712, is not a multiple of 7. All that work for nothing. The rule for 8 is similar to the rule for 4 and 2. The rule for two, remember, you check the last digit. The rule for four, you check the last two digits. The rule for eight, you check the last three digits for the same reason as four and as two. 1,000 is a multiple of eight, so any multiple of 1,000 is automatically a multiple of eight. So we have to check the multiples of eight up to 1,000, i.e. the last three digits. So it's a little more tedious than two and four. But it's all we got. Notice that 8 does divide into 712, which means 8 will divide into our original number. So depending on the values here, it might go fast, it might go slow, if you know your multiples of 8. 9 we already did, let's talk about 10. 10 is like uh, 2 and 5, where you can just look at it. For 10, if the number ends with a 0, then that means the number is divisible by 10. You can also see this rule as if 2 and 5 both work, so does 10. So let's recap. 6 is if 2 and 3 both work. 10 is if 2 and 5 both work. However, for 8, we can't say if 2 and 4 both work, so does 8. Not allowed to say it. Don't edit my words. That's illegal. So, the reason why 8 cannot be defined as if 2 and 4 both work is because 2 and 4 are not, do you know the term? Relatively prime. In other words, if your GCF is equal to 1, you're relatively prime, like in 2 and 3 and 2 and 5. However, for 2 and 4, the GCF is 2. In other words, 2 divides into 4. So, for instance, the number 12 is, is divisible by 2 and by 4, but not by 8. Whereas any number that's divisible by 2 and 5, both, is automatically divisible by 10. Because 2 and 5 are relatively prime. 11 is a goober, just like 7 was. But it's a good goober. I've yet to meet a bad goober. The rule for 11 is you add up every other digit starting from the left get that number, add up the remaining numbers, subtract those two values, and if you get a number that's divisible by 11, the entire number is divisible by 11. So for us, starting at the left, we get 7 plus 2 plus 7 plus 2. Well, that, that, that's nice. Adding up 7 plus 2 plus 7 plus 2, we get 18. The remaining digits were 8 plus 6 plus 1. 8 plus 6 plus 1 is 15. 18 minus 15 equals 3. Does 11 divide into 3? Hex no. That means 11 does not divide into 7,826,712. I like saying it. I like that you're writing checks. You know what? It might be easier. Just write one check, save some paper and some envelopes and some stamps. That's fine. I think we're up to about 200 bucks now. Awesome. Oh, I didn't forget to say American. Please send American. It's hard to do the transfer. On to the rule for 12. The rule for 12 works just like 6 does and 10. The rule for 12 is if 3 and 4 both work, so does 12. 
our number, 7 million, blah, saved you some money, is divisible by 3 and 4, which means it's also divisible by 12. And remember that works because 3 and 4 are, rewind the video if you have to, are you back? Relatively prime. It's a good phrase to know. It scares a lot of people. Awesome sauce. Well, that is the divisibility rules for 2 through 12.